Hello, stray viewer. My name is Monster Hunter, and I'm sure we all have a story of fighting Lucent and Arcacuga like that at some point. Some of you have probably adapted and can hunt it without issue, while the rest of you may struggle and take 20 minutes or need help to beat it. But hey, that's what I'm here for. I fought this monster a whopping seven times as we're recording this audio on the uh, 11th of August, and believe me, I am observant as all hell, so I think I know a thing or two about monster patterns and how to fight them. My main goal here is to help you be better at learning how to fight it on your own. In regards to the weapons though, I'm a filthy switch axe abuser, so forgive me if I mess up on anything that ain't switch axe. So welcome to my guide for Lucent Narcacuga. As you may already know, Lucent is just a rare species of Narcacuga. While they have similar mannerisms, Lucent has different attacks, specialties, and mechanics. For instance, as obvious as it is, Lucent can go near or fully invisible and has the ability to apply poison on its tail, but I won't spoil what's already been spoiled and move on. So let's talk about hit zones. Narcacuga has a total of eight parts. Head, the neck slash back, foreleg, cut wing, abdomen, hind leg, tail, and tail tip. The weakest parts on its body are the head and the tail for all types of damage. Kinsect extract for the parts are as follows. Red extracts are gathered from the head, orange extract gathered from the back, abdomen, tail, and tail tip, and white extract is gathered from the forelegs, hind legs, and the cut wings. Attacking different parts obviously causes it to flinch. The only parts that can be broken are the head, both cut wings, and the tail. Flinching or breaking the head causes Nargakuga to stumble and then roar, similar to when it is affected by a sonic bomb or when the back and or abdomen takes damage to flinch. In addition to these, when dealing enough damage to the head, Nargakuga will fall over briefly. When a cut wing is dealt enough damage or broken, Nargakuga will fall onto the opposite foreleg for a total of 8 seconds. There are two forms of breaks on Nargakuga's tail. A soft break, which only causes it to flinch while the break sound is played, and then severance. When the tail is severed, Nargakuga trips forward and slides a distance while turning 180 degrees and roaring. Compared to its base form, the elemental weaknesses are quite different. Rather than being weak to thunder and fire, it is instead susceptible to ice, dragon, and water in that order, while being completely immune to fire and thunder. For elemental blights, the duration for ice blight is the highest at 40 seconds, with water and thunder at 30, and fire blight lasting a measly 20 seconds and dealing 300 damage. While it can be afflicted with all status ailments, Blast is the only status with the lowest initial tolerance and tolerance increase, with Poison being the highest, followed by Paralysis, and lastly, Sleep. On screen now is all the status ailments with their tolerance and duration. Lucent Nargakuga is affected by flash and sonic bombs, as well as pitfall and shock traps. There are specificities though, dependent on its current state. Sonic bombs only affect it while it is not enraged, because just like regular Nargakuga, it flinches and immediately enters rage state. There are some instances where you may have to use multiple sonic bombs in order to get it to enrage, however I do not understand the logic behind it. It can only be affected by a pitfall trap when enraged or exhausted. 
if used when it is an enraged, it will simply escape the trap. Roar and Poison are the only types of status that it can apply outside of stun. Monster Hunter Rise database states that Lucent Nargakuga requires level 4 earplugs, but this is false. It only requires level 2 earplugs. Its poison can be minimized or negated by poison resistance. Nargakuga gains a few properties while enraged, such as different hit zone values, attacks, combos, damage, and speed. We'll be getting into attacks soon enough, but we're going to focus on the preliminary stats first. It takes 1,650 damage to enrage and remains so for two and a half minutes. Its total damage and speed are increased by 20%, while the damage it receives remains the same. The head, tail, and tail tip hit zone values are increased by 10 while it is enraged. The distinctive property of Lucent Nargakuga is going invisible, and it incorporates this feature into some of its actions. When affected by blights, poison, and dung bombs, Nargakuga can be seen while invisible and unlike Camellios, can also be seen by using the target feature. That's it for stats and properties. Now we're going to get into the attacks and their specifics now. By the by, I understand that Kira Nico has a complete list of attacks and their properties, but I'm here to simplify things, you know, so it's not harder. So a couple of things to address. I'm going to go over each move by describing it verbally and ways to dodge it and what to look out for. On screen though, I'm going to have bonus information such as what state of knockdown, guard interaction, how many hits and so on. Hopefully it's not too much information to process. The base roar for any monster. This is easily prevented with earplugs level two. When it enrages, the properties remain the same. Uh, if it does manage to hit you, it will immobilize you for about a few seconds. I tried not to be too cringe with the name, but essentially this is what it does. It goes invisible or it fades out. However, this can be combined with movements or other actions, and whenever I address an attack with Fade in front of it, just know that that's a combined attack. This can be seen if you have a blight or ailment on it, if you're using the target cam, or by the wind around it and the dust that it kicks up when moving. A straightforward bite that has more oomph than its base pieces. This attack is easily dodged by moving to either the left or the right side of its head. You can also use something to come in from the top, uh, but if you do get hit, while the head and back is moving, then it will knock you out of the air. The standard Nargakuga Leap. The hitbox is deceptive, by which I mean that it can be dodged by merely evading under the wing that it's coming from, but can also hit you if you are under its head or the other foreleg he uses. It has quite a bit of height and can potentially knock you out of the air if you're not high enough or if you're coming down while he's still in motion. Another thing to note, you can tell which foreleg he's going to use by the one that's pulled further back while he's positioning himself to swing. Once again, unlike its base species, this attack is actually rather tame. The worst it does is knock you on your butt. The catch, however, is that it always leads into something, and if it hits you, it can disrupt your ability to dodge that something. The hitbox for this move is actually quite simple to dodge. Avoid his head and the forelegs and you should be fine. Another way to prevent this from taking effect is by having flinch free. Lucent takes a pose before swinging his cut wing in an arc towards your current location. You can figure out which foreleg he is going to use by observing which one he uses to cover himself with as he uses the opposite to swing, as seen by the paw he has raised in the air. I also say current location because he specifically strikes for where you are in the moment and not where you're going. With that said, it's easy to dodge this move by simply getting closer to him, which I'll be referring to from here on out as hugging. Beware though, if he is doing this attack, he is more than likely going to combo into something else. The one tail gram 64 paws attack, Nargakuga takes a stance before swinging its body in a circle. The most dangerous aspect of this attack is his tail, as it can still reach you even if you're set distance back. This is thankfully a much different from the game that it originated in where the tail would actually extend itself. A notable property of this attack is how it is able to scoot itself a small distance away from you once it finishes. As for dodging it, 
This attack can easily be evaded through without any levels of evade if you just roll into the attack. This is because the speed at which the attack is coming at you and the width of the tail makes it easier for your body to slink through as the evade goes off. It's even easier for weapons that have a sidestep. You could also use an attack that allows you to enter the air so long as you time it right since this attack is purely horizontal and not vertical at all. The last known way to dodge this attack is very rare in and of itself, but by placing yourself precisely underneath the head and the abdomen, this removes yourself somehow from the hurt box. So unless you've mastered doing this, this is one of the riskiest of them all. A curved attack that can be performed from either the left or the right side. Unlike Barioth, this attack range is limited. You can easily dodge it by hugging near its head or the foreleg on the same side the attack is coming from. You can also do an aerial maneuver to get in if you want as well. A tracking tail swipe that sets a small amount of distance between you and the monster after striking. This attack is honestly my favorite to abuse. If you aren't aware or prepared for it and dodge in the direction the attack is going, then you're going to have a bad time. But if you can either evade in the direction the attack is coming from or run up on it, then you can easily dodge this and take advantage of his recovery animation. At least that's what I'm willing to call it. It's really just it flexing. Another property of this attack is being paired with Fade before being enraged. Narga goes invisible as it leaps backward before reappearing to do a tail sweep. During this time invisible, it positions itself closer to you while you can't see it and then begins the tail sweep maneuver. If you don't know this signature Narga Kuga move, then I don't know what to say. But essentially, Narga turns away from you, leaps in the air, and slams its tail into the ground. And Rise, this attack tracks you until it comes down. Moving in the air is not recommended unless you're in Set Glaive and can change direction because this attack is actually quite high. Evading, sliding, wire bug jumping, and any other quick move to the side of left or right easily dodges this. You can also use invulnerability frames from wire bug moves because the slam does not produce a shockwave or have a lingering hitbox. After the attack, Nagakuka's tail becomes stuck in the ground and you can either reposition yourself or take advantage of its tail while it's grounded. Nargakuga lunges twice before fading and reappearing with a pounce. Just like a regular lunge, you can figure out which foreleg he's going to use the same way. The first thing you may notice about this attack is that the lunges are much faster. The dodge for this attack is still the same depending on which foreleg it uses. As for the final pounce, if you can clear distance before it can jump, you can make your way out of it. You can also get closer and allow it to jump over you uh, if you're attempting to focus its tail down, like if you're a gunner or if you're really just trying to break the tail off. You can also move to either the left or the right side to get out of it, evade backwards at the right distance in time, or use an aerial attack depending on your distance so that you can at least jump over it before it actually swings down with its face biting. A rather simple move, Narcacuca swirls its tail before launching spikes in your general direction. Unlike its old gen iterations, these spikes do not fan out and instead are thrown in a straight line towards you. This is easily dodged by moving to the left or the right side or just hugging Narga. When the spikes make contact with you, they break, but if they manage to hit the floor, then they will remain there for a few seconds. Should you touch one of these, not only will it flinch you, but it will also poison you as well. These can also be negated by having flinch free and poison resistance. Lucid Narcacuga applies poison to its tail. This is indicated by the camera zooming out and the rustle-like sound before it puffs out and splashes a bit of poison. This gives it new attacks and alters tail whip and tail slam by firing out poison spikes as well. Narcacuga poses before leaping backwards and firing a volley of spikes in a cone in front of it. This shares the same spike properties as tail spikes. This is the easiest attack to dodge if you hug, or if you are too far, move backwards. Spikes are launched into the air before raining down in a line. While this is happening, Nargakuga will slink around you to attack. Dodging the line of spikes isn't difficult. It's simply a matter of walking out of it. The difficulty comes from dodging Nargakuga as it uses one of several moves in a pool to combine into this move. Pay attention to it more than the spikes, as you can see the clouds on the ground and know where to go from there. After readying itself, Narcacuga launches spikes in the air and flexes. 
Afterward, a circle of spikes rains down around it three times, each progressively getting further from the point of origin. The interesting thing about this attack is that after flexing, Narka is free to do whatever he pleases while the rain is still happening. If you're on the outside of this, you can enter easily by waiting for the initial or second ring to end before the second or third ring begins. And just roll in. Another thing to be careful of is your positioning. If you're too close to the ring and Narga's body parts, it can push you into the initial ring. The first of two attacks that Narga starts off with a shallow roar. The camera pans out while your character warns you of the oncoming attack as Narga Kuga roars. It then leaps back before launching itself in a flurry towards you. The safest place to be is either above it or to its right side as it seems to spin on its left side. If this attack makes contact with you, it launches you in the air. Be careful if you're using a knockback resistant attack as it deals multiple high damaging hits. If you mess around and tackle, dash breaker, zero sum discharge, or what have you, it could potentially stun or cart you off rip. The second of the shallow roar attacks. This one is immediately discernible from Warwind as it, the movements it makes before going invisible are quite distinctive. With the exception of its eyes, it goes completely invisible and darts around you multiple times before reappearing, leaping, and then jumping into a powerful tail slam. This could potentially one-shot you if you're not careful or if your defense is not high enough from either not upgrading, Mail of Hellfire, etc. Guard up is the only way that you can block this attack. If you do get hit with it and survive, you'll be sent into a spin-out. Easy to dodge if you just relax and wait for it to make its move. If you aren't going to counter it, you can evade to your right as it only tracks you a certain distance before finally slamming down. Just like the tail slam, the, the hitbox is precise and doesn't have a shockwave, though in my observations I've come to realize that Nargakuga does this attack when it reaches a certain health threshold. I've ran around it for like 20 minutes without doing anything, I've enraged it twice, nothing happened. It was only until I started hitting it more and more did it even decide that this was the right move to make. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact damage threshold, but I'm here to tell you that it has to be like 20,000 because I've seen it do this move like twice in a fight. So lastly, this attack also unlocks new combos and I'll cover those as well. I'm not going to dub over this section. Instead, I'm going to let it play and put notes up on the screen that showcase the information you need to know about spotting if and when the combo is coming. The properties remain the same as their non-combo forms. An interesting aspect of Lucent Nargakuga is that after it does the Tail Slam special, it gains access to a closed off section of its move list. These moves add the fade effect and can also chain together moves that weren't previously possible. This disrupts the matchup if you are used to how it behaves prior to this technique. I won't be dubbing over this portion either and will once again just put the information up on the screen.
Like other monsters, Nargakuga can become exhausted. This takes a rather long time, even with Stamina Thief on a blunt weapon. When it does become exhausted though, a shiny drops off from the center of its body. The animation for Nargakuga's exhaustion has it stooped over drooling before it scoots back a few steps. As soon as it finishes this animation, it will begin a movement or an attack. When it does a fate jump to the side, it will slide across the ground before composing itself to act once again. This is often followed up with a lunge. Speaking of lunge, whenever it does this attack, it will always flex at the end. Be careful though, it can add another lunge to the end of the first. As for the other attacks, each of them is performed much slower while it is exhausted. The startup, active frames, and recovery are all lengthened, so be cautious if you're used to its normal speed. It can trip you up if you're too presumptuous. Now that the statistical nonsense is out of the way, it's time I showed you a practical example. While I am knowledgeable of every weapon, I do main the switch axe. Despite this, I am going to use two weapons that I am not skilled with, the lance and the hammer. This is to show you that even if you are subpar at the weapon you're using, that as long as you know how the monster behaves, then everything else will fall in place and you'll be able to find out an answer for anything. I'm going to be presenting clips of moments or attacks and without dubbing over it. Uh, once the clip is finished, I'm going to add my commentary on what I did, why I did, and how I did it for both weapons. Battle is a beautiful thing. It can be like a song and a dance where you follow the rhythm or a question and answer where an initial action is like a question and the following reaction is like an answer. There are ways to do battle where you relentlessly seek your opponent's throat, but for right now, we're going to slow down and take it easy. We're going to calculate our aggression. The first bit of advice I can give is to have a strong engagement. By engagement, I mean the first hit and the follow-up. You know already that monsters roar when they officially spot you per se, and like I said, it's all question and answer. Combat is started with Narcacuda and it's going to roar. That is the question. Whatever you decide to do is the answer, whether it's right or wrong. So take my hammer for instance. I'm going to force the roar and position myself to parry it. Once parried, I can set up for my next action by either upswing or charging. Either is fine as long as I can hit the head because my goal is to stun it. Now that it is out of the roar, and I have yet to stun it, I need to find a way to cash out on the prize that I've been setting up. With the lance, however, I have several answers for this roar, but for this instance, I'm going to use insta-block and perform a wide sweep for DPS before resetting my position to be able to counter whatever comes next. An aspect of all monsters is that their attacks can leave them exposed. If you're accustomed to its behavior, you can play more recklessly as long as you don't use the limited window you have to muck about and prevent your way out in case things go sideways. If you have trouble recognizing patterns or aren't very adept at your movements, just wait until Narcacuga does an attack that has a long recovery and take advantages where you can. If you keep doing this, over time you'll get adjusted to what you can and can't do and build confidence to take riskier actions. An example, I understand the hammer isn't the fastest and many attacks take a bit to perform or recover from, so I won't make aggressive plays. Instead, I'll wait for an attack I know I can abuse. This attack is easy to dodge and allows me to get in close while Narcacuga is still recovering. I understand I don't have a lot of time to make flashy plays, but I can get in what damage I can before the next action. If you manage to get a stagger or a stumble, do not be afraid to follow up on it, as long as it is within reason. With the lands, however, I can wait on Narcacuga to come to me, as it will naturally do so, and still be able to put my two cents in when it does, so long as I don't overdo it. Once you start having to answer for each action, you'll be able to perform them without thinking too hard on it. It'll be instinct by that point. If you're getting the hang of the rhythms, start learning how to hug Narcacuga. Some of its attacks are easy to dodge or simply be out of the way of if you stick close to it. 
On the other hand, some of its attacks can also reposition it away from you. If you can close the gap, you can also get in a few hits or reset your positioning. Hammer and Lance may not be the fastest or have a lot of movement speed, but what they lack in speed, they make up for in mobility. With Dash Breaker or Keeping Sway, you can easily zip in and out of situations while maintaining your current charge. You can use this to close gaps, whether Nargakuga willingly moves out of the way or you stagger it and it moves backwards. Same with several attacks Lance has, like Dash, Guard Dash, Shield Charge, out of Spiral, thrust, whatever. Like I said earlier, don't be afraid to follow up. If you do manage to get a, a stagger or a knockdown or anything like that, and Nargakuga moves a distance away from you, do not be afraid to use those mobility options that are available to you in order to catch up so that you don't waste precious time. Keep in mind, after Lucent Nargakuga performs its super, it changes behavior, and if you don't change yours, you'll get easily rocked. I'm going to play a montage of actions I've taken against certain moves with both weapons so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about.
Oh my god, it's finally done! Between ridiculous work hours and some minor inconveniences, I've finally gotten it done after half a month. I don't ever want to see another fade or opacity again. I tried to make this guy thematic, but I ain't no editor yet, so, uh, this was grueling. If you enjoyed this video, though, and want more, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, but just keep your eye out, because I'll be posting things like this on the regular, along with some other plans that I have. Um, if you want another monster specifically, you can go ahead and say so in the comments. Uh, I'll try to take whatever recommendations I can get, but I'll see what I take as priority from here. Hopefully I can do it quicker than I did this one.